Okay, listen, I have literally never been a morning person, but when I say that learning how to wake up early is what has seriously changed my life, I'm not exaggerating. It's the truth. It is so worth it. An extra hour of time in the morning is something that you can truly change your life with. This is something that I recently have randomly become super passionate about. I don't think that's gonna stop anytime soon. If you're new here, hi, my name's Camilla. I'm 25 years old and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're not new here and you're like, do I follow this girl? I dyed my hair red. <laughs> I dyed my hair red, like a copper orangey red, I guess. I'm excited about it. I've never done anything different with my hair other than being blonde. Back to the topic at hand. I just want to fully lay out the fact that I was never like this. I never used to be excited about waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning. I literally, in college and after, used to sleep through my alarms, like, full on would not even hear them. Or more often, most of the time, I would have been snoozing my alarm on my phone for like an hour and then I finally would wake up and be like, I'm mentioning this just to say that if you think that you're someone that's just not a morning person, naturally not a morning person, I believe that you can change that. Now, at the same time, that's not me saying like, everyone needs to be a morning person. This is the best way to live your life. If nighttime is your thing, that's totally cool. I just think that for me, it feels like I've unlocked a whole extra part of my day that I never accessed before. You know, I never took full advantage. Just a little Little disclaimer, not saying you need to be this way at all, at all. I feel like I could talk about this for so long, but I'm just gonna do 10 tips for you today. A lot of these tips actually like a couple bullet points within the tips, so they're stacked. Number one, and most importantly, what is your why? This is a great question just for life, can always be applied to more specific things. Why do you wanna wake up at whatever time you're trying to wake up at that's earlier than you currently are waking up? Why do you wanna wake up at 5 a.m.? What are you trying to gain from this extra hour or two of time that you'll get before you have to do your other responsibilities in life, like go to work, take care of kids, whatever it is. Do you have a personal passion project that you're working on or are you trying to start a business, to read, learn a new language? Is it just that you wanna be able to get in a workout before the day begins? Whatever it is, you need to have a clear vision of what you want your life to be like when you get this extra two hours in your day. Of all of the different possible reasons though, most likely has something to do with taking extra time for yourself before the day begins and you're giving your time to other people in your life, to your work, to your family, whatever it is. And then this why that you have, this big statement that is your why of why you are doing this thing, that is what you can go back to when you are all warm and cozy and comfy in bed and you're like, not this morning, I'm not getting up early this morning. That is what you can prompt your brain to remember why you want to do this. Okay, well, I don't have to get up early this morning, but if I don't, I'm not gonna have the extra hour or two hours. You know what I'm saying? You, you kind of have to peer pressure yourself into it a little bit. Tip number two, throw your phone away, okay? Not literally, obviously, hopefully obviously. I think that the phone is really just one of the biggest disruptors of sleep for so many reasons. So throwing your phone away involves multiple things. First of all, you need to put your phone in another room when you're sleeping. You're gonna try to come up with a bunch of reasons as to why you need your phone by your bed when you sleep. And listen, basically all of these reasons I am super empathetic to because they are all something that I've spent time fighting through and coming up with reasons against putting my phone in another room. They're all excuses. There might be something that is completely valid in your life and that's cool. But I'm just speaking generally, it's probably an excuse. Throwing your phone away involves putting your phone in another room when you sleep, stop using your phone as your alarm clock altogether. And the last thing that involves throwing your phone away is stop looking at it right before bed. Ideally, 30 minutes to an hour before bed, you are off of your phone, even if it's just the last five to 10 minutes. 
before you're going to sleep, you don't touch your phone, you are already helping yourself wind down. You're not touching it anymore. You're not looking at it. You're not on social media or checking the news and getting all of this information brought into your brain and activating your brain. Start with a minimum of 10 minutes if that's not something that you already enact in your life. And I promise you, you're about to sleep so much better. Okay, tip number three, branching off of the last one, get an alarm clock and put it on the other side of your room. Make the first and last thing that you touch every day your alarm clock and not your phone. I promise you there are affordable alarm clocks out there. You don't need anything fancy. If you wanna get something fancy, go for it. I've seen that like sunrise alarm clock. It illuminates the whole room as it's going off, which honestly sounds super duper cool. I don't have that. I just have like a $15 one from Amazon or something. And it is directly across the room from me. So it is far away from my bed. I can't stretch across bed and reach my alarm clock. I have to get up and physically turn the alarm off. This is a game changer, it really is. And once you get that alarm clock, go ahead and set your alarm to automatically be on every weekday or every day of the week, whatever your preference is. But even my cheap alarm clock can auto set to every day of the week or every weekday. I think that those are the two main options for it. Get an alarm clock, put it as far away from you as you can and use it. Tip number four, this one is obvious, get to bed earlier if you're not already. So whatever your goal time of waking up is, if it's 7 a.m., if it is 6 a.m., 5 a.m., whatever, you need to be asleep like seven to eight hours before that, okay? This all is completely useless if you go to bed at 1 a.m. and are trying to wake up at five. You might have like one or two days of adrenaline where you're actually like, oh, I feel great. Like I only need four hours of sleep. No, no. <laughs> Get your sleep so that you can actually operate at a good level the next day so that you can actually wake up and feel rested. Optimizing your sleep, that's just a whole other different topic, but the first thing that you can at least try to do is go to bed earlier. If you usually stay up till midnight or past midnight, you don't need to rip the band-aid right away necessarily, unless you want to. But just start by going to bed like 20 minutes earlier every night than you usually do. I mean, if you're not going to bed early enough to get a decent amount of sleep, then this is, this is all useless. This is all useless. This probably should have been tip number one. Everyone knows themselves the best. I know people out there that just swear that they operate the best at six hours of sleep or something like that. And anything more than that is too much and they feel lethargic. Whatever magic number your sleep is, I think for most adults that's seven to eight or seven to nine, figure out when you wanna wake up, take your magic number, subtract it from that time and get to bed by 10 p.m. or whatever time it is. Tip number five, tip number five. Tip number five is to optimize your wind down time. Again, encompasses a lot of things. First of them being no caffeine, after 2 p.m. I would say 2 p.m. at the latest. Ideally no caffeine after 12 noon. Literally just have it in the morning and be done with it. I'm gonna try to be hard on y'all a little bit, but I'm also gonna be soft on y'all. So after 2 p.m. That is the ideal caffeine cutoff time. Something else to incorporate into your wind down time, not eat right before bed. We all love a little snacky before bed. If you can have your dinner, dessert, snacks, whatever over with, by at least an hour before bed, great. Let your body be digesting your food so that it can start calming down. <laughs> this is also something that's just gonna help you sleep better in the end. Anything else that you wanna incorporate into your wind down time, that goes here. If you like to read a book before bed, if you like to watch a show, just maybe don't be looking at the screen right before bedtime, but you know, whatever helps you wind down for bed, insert into your wind down time. But most importantly, no caffeine after 2 p.m. and maybe stop eating at least 30 minutes an hour before bedtime. Okay, all of these things so far have been to prep you for bedtime, basically. Prep you for having the best sleep of your life. But once your alarm is actually going off the next morning and you have to wake up, what do you do? What do you do to make it easier? Tip number six, don't get back in bed, okay? Don't get back in bed. I am possibly the biggest victim of this. I have done this 
countless times, especially when you don't necessarily have anything that you have to do right away. And you're like, well, I can go back to sleep for 30 minutes. Or even worse, you're like, I'm just gonna lie down, but I'm not gonna go back to sleep. You're always gonna go back to sleep. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get up, you're gonna start getting ready for your day. Go to the bathroom, wash your face, or get up, go to another room, sit in a chair. If you're gonna be sitting down to do something, sit in a chair. We're not sitting back in bed. We're not gonna sit on the comfy little couch. Anything that you're gonna start feeling relaxed and wanna go back to sleep, no, 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 no. <laughs> and if I'm being harsh, it's because I used to do this all the time. I probably still, do it every now and then. Unless you're absolutely exhausted, right? Just get out of bed. Whatever your why is, start doing that. Start getting ready for your workout. Start working on your personal project, your business. Start reading your book in a chair so that you don't fall back asleep. Stand up and get ready. Speaking from experience. Number seven, not everyone is gonna be happy with this one, but take a cold shower. This is one of the things on this list that I don't really do. I used to do it and then I fell out of that habit and I honestly do wanna get back into it. But once you take a cold shower, you're up for the day. You're not going back to sleep if you wanted to. Getting that cold rush first thing in the morning wakes you up an unbelievable amount. I honestly can't even believe that I'm sitting in front of the camera preaching a cold shower, but if you need something to really help you get up and get your day started, you need to try taking a cold shower. When I'm talking about a cold shower right now, I mean standing under the coldest temperature possible in your shower for like 30 seconds to 90 seconds. Stand under the freezing cold water and just take it, okay? You can do it. Now that I'm talking about this to the world, I probably will officially get back in my cold shower game because I haven't been taking them recently and I know that I probably should because it feels great after. It's awful, it's awful during them, but they feel great after the fact. Okay, tip number eight, get some sunlight. Wait, what? But you're trying to wake up before the sun's even up. If that's the case, if the time that you're trying to wake up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. or something like that is before the sun even comes up, then do something to mimic the sun as soon as you can. I know that I like to just wander into the bathroom, not turn on any lights at all or turn on like the lowest light possible or like an accent light. Turn on the bright overhead light. Turn on a ring light if you have a ring light. If you're a super fancy person and you have one of those like actual lamps that's supposed to mimic the sun, turn on your sun lamp. Is it called a happy lamp? I don't know. But those lamps that are supposed to like help out, especially in the winter time with like seasonal depression and everything, turn on that. As soon as you can get bright light in your eyes, in your face, soaking your skin in the morning, the better. If you're trying to wake up by like seven or eight, then maybe the sun is like starting to come up or completely up by then. And in that case, go outside, go to the window, open a window, go on a balcony, your porch, your patio, whatever it is, and get that sunlight. But obviously there's not always sunlight. It might be a cloudy day. It might be just the winter. That's why we have overhead lights. Unfortunately, I know they're awful, but that's why we have them. Tip number nine, give yourself a little treat. If you have gotten up out of bed, gone to the next level and taken a cold shower, gotten your sunlight in, give yourself a little treat. It's probably your morning coffee, but whatever just like really warms your heart in the morning. Morning coffee, morning tea, some other morning beverage or something like that that just makes you happy. Give yourself your little treat. Obviously you're probably gonna do this anyway, but this is something that's really just about the mindset of now I get to have my coffee. If one of those isn't something that you enjoy, then we need to come up with a little treat for you. Maybe it is an actual treat, a little cookie. In my mind, it is a coffee or a tea. Maybe for you, it's a hot chocolate. Maybe it's orange juice. <laughs> yes, this is a little bit materialistic, but I think it works. A little materialistic item for you to look forward to, and once you get out of bed, once you do these things to help you wake up, you can get your little treat and it's gonna be great. Last thing, 
Tip number 10, this doesn't really have a lot to do with actually being able to get up and wake up, but this is something that makes you feel so much better if you do it, will make your mornings so much better if you're able to take this piece of advice and enact it in your daily life. And that is not touching your phone. So we're kind of going back to tip number two and throwing your phone away. Ideally for at least 30 minutes to even an hour of being up and awake, you are setting yourself up to have a great day. You are not taking in all this different information first thing in your morning. You're not reading the news. You're not seeing what other people were up to on social media. This morning time is literally for you. So take it for yourself. As soon as you go on your phone, you are giving away your time and your energy to everyone else in the world. So don't do that. Keep this little morning time for yourself and don't touch your phone. Don't check your phone. Don't go into all your different apps for at least the first 30 minutes, okay? This is another one of the tips that I need to continue working on myself. I don't do that every day. I at least try to not touch my phone for the first little while of being awake in the day. If you're someone that already enacts these things, you're amazing. But the feeling that you get from not touching your phone for the first 30 minutes of your day, that feeling is so great that it'll make you want to repeat this cycle and want to keep trying to wake up early, exist just for yourself for the first hour of your day. Chef's kiss, good stuff. Now I do wanna say, I totally realize that there are situations or occupations where you might kind of honestly need to check your phone first thing in the morning. And listen, I totally get this from working in film. I am so used to checking my phone as soon as I wake up to see if a new call sheet has gotten emailed out, checking that my call time is the same, seeing if anyone in my department has been texting because there's been some change in what we need to do. Definitely get really anxious if I don't check my phone first thing in the morning. Obviously these past couple months, I've been working in that aspect of the film industry because it has not been happening. But in general, that is why I would always check my phone first thing in the morning. But since there's been this whole lapse in the film industry, I've been able to feel like I can actually put my phone away during the night and not look at it first thing in the morning. And I am really excited to keep carving out this time for myself, even when film is fully back, so that I have a certain set amount of time that I don't need to check my phone in the morning. Your phone and everything on it will always be there. It's not going away. So take that time for yourself instead of everyone else in the world. And that is the ending point that I wanna leave you with. These 10 tips can be a lot to try to do all at once. So I would say, if there's things that you're not already doing on that list, take two and start working on two of them. Eventually, once you get better at two of those things, then add in two more. I also fully realize that there's people with all types of careers out there. Your job might be something where you're actually having to work overnight. I just hope that these points in general can help you out with just figuring out a better schedule or routine for your life so that you can feel like you have time for yourself. That is really what this all comes down to. I feel like I've been rambling a lot. Hopefully I can edit this beautifully and it won't seem like I'm rambling, but I challenge you, <laughs> I challenge you to think about, is this thought that I'm having, is this an excuse or is this an actual reason that I can't do this thing to make my life better? Okay, that's it. If you are wanting to become a morning person or take more advantage of your mornings, I highly encourage you to, but I hope there was a nugget of information, inspiration, something like that somewhere in this video that you got out of it. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you again next time. Bye.